good? All right, baby. And I was going to talk about right, how nervous I was. Uh, we're uh, it's software here uh, to uh, present Doom to y'all today. It's uh, I'm Jason Martin, the lead character artist. This is Denzel O'Neill, senior character artist, and Brian Winia, uh, another That's senior character artist. So uh, without further ado, we'll just kind of jump into it. Like I said, it's software. <laughs> um, so uh, in creating uh, a Doom, I think the most iconic well aspect done. of it is demons. It doesn't look like that character's coming through too much, but you get the idea. Um, so uh, going, going all the way back to the, the, uh, just the in recreating Doom uh, this last year, last couple years actually, was uh, um, it's not an easy thing because we all grew up with this game, or at least a lot of us did. Like, I mean, I was 20 years ago, I think was roughly 20 years ago was my first time I ever played it. And um, it has, it's a little bit of a dream come true in, in a lot of ways because when I was a kid, uh, who could imagine that uh, 20 years down the line after playing at my friend's Gateway Pentium 486, uh, actually it was a Pentium, so it was past 486, but um, same roughly era, that I would ever actually get to actually work on this title was, it was it, 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 it's pretty much a gigantic blessing and a great opportunity. So um, it was quite a, uh, quite a journey and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through this stuff and we'll talk about it along the way. So the biggest thing when you go back to such a title with these iconic kind of characters is how do, how do we breathe life, breathe life into these characters that everybody grew up with or has seen everywhere? Like, I mean, everybody has an idea what Doom is and what they think it is and what it should be. And it's very, very hard to, you know, to, to recreate these things and please everybody and then also be happy with what we're doing. So um, we spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time in iteration really focusing on what the characters want to be. I mean, you have Doom 1 and 2, and then there's 3, and, uh, and there, there's, there's some pretty distinct variations between the two, and like everybody loves each style, and everybody has an idea what they want the next game to be, so we really went back to the roots of everything and stared at them thoroughly and went through a lot of iteration of like what should be this and what should be that. And um, um, if you guys have played the game, which I hope you all have, um, you can, I think it's pretty obvious that we definitely like to harken back to the early days and, and, yep. and, and bring like, those characters onto the screen in a whole new uh, light. I mean, I mean, even at pixel art, as simple as that is, it's iconic. I mean, it's amazing. I still look at these things and are blown away by them. Um, and we, I mean, I mean we, we referenced all this stuff back in the day, like even the gifts, the sprites, and everything. I mean, stepping right into the Cacodemon, that was the, um, the first character I got to work on um, at id, uh, which is like a huge, huge honor actually, because it's like such an iconic character. Um, oh, am I good? Uh, yeah, you're good. Alex Velasquez uh, did the first pass on this character and the, the base mesh for this, so it was awesome just getting to work with that. Um, designed by Hugo Martin. Yeah. We got some in-game screenshots of these guys. It's really also, on a real quick note, I want to step in and real quick and talk about, like, one of the things we wanted to go back and recreating these characters was we wanted to make them simple, like, obviously iconic, and also something, like, we, uh, Hugo used to always talk about, like, something a kid can draw on the back of his notebook in school. Like, it's just stuck in your mind. So we referenced a lot of old 80s stuff, like uh, uh, Evil Dead was a huge reference, old metal album covers, uh, metal period. Um, really just, it's, you know, it's fun. You want to take characters to a level of like not, to the edge of campy, but pull it back. So it's like gory, gross, but fun and not like, oh, I'm disgusted. It's got to be cool and interesting. And I think we spent yeah. a lot of time focusing in on and really, really ho like honing those demons and trying to make them like, let's make this <coughs> as crazy we can be to a point like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Let's pull it back. It's still got to be somewhat scary. You know what I mean? The, so, the yeah. word used a lot was popcorn violence where it's more of like when someone exploded, it was like, whoa, and not like, Ooh! you know, like this kind of gross reaction, because all you do in the game is forward progress, blow stuff up, rip it apart. So if you were just constantly nauseated by that process, like what is your motivation to move forward in the game? And that's actually a really big point about the game. I mean, we want to get into the gameplay aspect of it too much because we're here about to talk about the art, but that was the whole thing was the push forward. We wanted to keep the character moving. But that does play into uh, the characters because if you're moving that fast, how, how much of an impact can that character have on the screen that rapidly, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it, it's simpler, the more iconic, but still as awesome as they can be so you know exactly what that is. 
you know how to fight it, you know how to go, because you're moving at 60 frames per second, and if anybody's played the game, you know it's pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's arguably all, not as fast as the one and two, maybe, but as damn close <laughs> as you can to play on a console. Oh, this guy's just a giant ball. You can't yeah. really mistake that. <laughs> just meat ball. Um, this, this is a Baron, and obviously we wanted to go back to the roots <clears> of the, the, the Baron of Hell, and, and what are you going to do? You got to have like the horns, the plating, um, and he's got to be vicious. Yeah, he's another super icon iconic character. Um, the first pass on this guy was originally done by Cliff Young, which uh, he did an awesome job in it. Um, yeah, we just we took him through a few passes, which actually we kind of do with most of the characters, because as um, we hone in, as Jace was saying on um, on the project, um, everything just got better and better and kind of leveled up all together. Some in-game screens. By the way, um, we will, we'll be releasing these, the, like, these uh, images in a much higher resolution. There was a little bit of a, a bungle when we were saving these out, the, the, one, the exact screen I wanted it to be. But um, these will all be going online here shortly, so you can actually get a better look at Yeah. As we like, skim through these, you'll be able to see them online. One thing to say, too, with a lot of the in-game stuff, we took all this using our, um, basically our photo mode yeah, it's photo in games. Yeah. So, and like, we have some images that we took. Some images were taken by the community. And for me, like, I'm, I, I like know how to make monsters, and I'm like awful at rendering. So when we were like, getting ready to do stuff, we are like, how do we get these shots? And we are just like, dude, let's just use the photo viewer. And you just go through the game, and yeah, it, it's, it's bonkers. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, about half of our in-game in -game screenshots are us. About half of them is the community. Yep. So I want to throw that out there. I can't give credit to each one I did. We went on the forums and stuff and pulled them. So <clears throat> if you're out there, I apologize. But like, we wanted to pull Thank stuff you, from Internet. the fan. That's another, we really, in creating Doom also, we really, really, really went to the forums and listened to a lot of people. Like, oh, we, yeah. We really, really A little too much. I cared a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of hurt, you know? I mean, yeah, you got yeah. these things, like, <laughs> it's kind of hard to please everybody, but um, like, uh, that, that is one thing we did is we really wanted to pay attention. So, like, uh, and that's, that's where we got some half these screenshots. Uh, the in-game ones, not the actually. Yeah. Um, uh, Cyber Demon's an interesting point to talk about. Um, this was one of the earlier uh, characters when we very first started digging into what we wanted to do with Doom and trying to figure out our, our pathway and like how we work, direction we wanted to take it. And, um, and me and Hugo worked extensively on this guy, a couple iterations back and forth. Um, I mentioned earlier, we did spend a lot of time at iterating on these guys. Um, I, I mean, they went through, I mean, we would get, we would always get concepts from the, our concept team. They're a great bunch of guys. And um, we would always usually start building on that, but then it would evolve. Some of it would be back and forth, the concept team, back to the character team. Yeah. Um, and, and a very uh, cohesive process on bringing these guys to life. But we did go through a lot of iterations, tried a different, bunch of different stuff, and we tried to, you know, it did evolve the characters through the pipeline, so to speak. But this is definitely one of the first characters out, the, out of the gate that we uh, created for uh, 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 Doom. And we're gonna go over that process later on, the you know the iterations and. Yeah, actually, yeah. Denz and Brian are gonna cover that extensively. It's one of our main focuses of the day. Yeah, my my demo is pretty simple. It's basically it's more kind of like game production, and you're gonna be showing you guys how to take a Z tool and basically setting it up for iteration and just because like every company I've ever worked at, there's always this question like during the interview process of, of like, uh, are you comfortable with iteration? And that kind of comes down to like, are you cool with changing stuff a lot? Because people's minds are going to change. This is people are going to post something online, and um, so yeah. Hopefully, I can show you guys a, a few tips and tricks on ways that I cut things up and organize stuff so that you can uh, make your client your job happy. Um, another thing w worth mentioning uh, uh, is our uh, being that our game was 60 <laughs> FPS. We had um, and we had a lot of characters on the screen and whatnot. Um, we had to actually work with pretty low budgets, so that was a real challenge creating like next gen characters. With, I mean, I mean, they weren't super low, but I mean, some of these, like, I mean, I think he was like, Cyberdeem was like 60, 55,000 triangles, something like that. Yeah. Some, some of the later characters, we got a little bit more breathing room, but and he's massive days, as well. Yeah, he's a huge character. Yeah, you, like, game. if you haven't played the game, you literally like run up his leg. So I mean, it's <laughs> pretty large character. But I mean, it was really, a, it was a fun and definitely challenging uh, situation to be in to be like, okay, we gotta make these crazy things, but we only have this much. Uh, it was a lot of fighting back and forth of programming. I remember being in the office yeah. and being like, hey, dude, I need, I'm getting blood from a stone at this point, man. You've got to give me some more. But, you know, we made it work, and that's the one a really key element with our game that I'm pretty proud about 
is with the materials and stuff, props to uh, our, our core tech team at id for really pushing the bar. Because um, with the materials and lighting and stuff and the depth of field really, 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 really makes it sing, even though, like, I mean, working for a 30 FPS game for a 60 FPS game, your triangle count is just, it's going to be dwarfed quite a bit because you're rendering twice as many frames. So it was, um, that was a really good challenge, and I think the, from the core tech team down to the character team, just really trying to work like low poly cages to bring in high res ZBrush stuff, you know, to, to life um, was definitely a, a, a heavy task. Uh, th 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 this right here, just to give credit, that's definitely, this was a, actually a fan shot that I, 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 I absolutely just loved it cool. to death, and that's a, just an in-game screenshot from a fan. No doctoring at all in any of these. He's just straight up just right out of the game. Yeah, hey, that's crazy. Uh, this is a real interesting thing we're tasked about. I wish we could have showed more of some of this stuff that will be coming out uh, a little bit later, is we did a lot of uh, prop work yeah. for DL, like in the environments and stuff like this. This one we can show, but some of the other stuff is attached to DLC, so we can't really. But uh, it was an interesting thing at the end of the game, um, us having to refocus our work, because we just did all animatable characters up at the end, uh, specific, mainly me and Brian. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> went to town with the environment guys and just started creating tons of skulls, uh, bones, rib cages, gore, piles of <laughs> guts gore. and goo, and you, I, I, I gotta have to just talk about that real quick because it's a fun little tidbit. It's like I always joke that we have we have gore meetings. That, that cracks me up. Like it's yeah. like, hey, we got, hey, you know, at two p.m. the gore meeting, and you go in there and just talk about how to make guts and gross stuff and yeah. and have fun and like Are take notes in the wall. Are they too red? <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, when what you think about it, what type of orifice like, is that? <laughs> There's lots of that. I made a lot of really inappropriate things. <laughs> I took one screen grab. I'll try to post it somewhere else that I can't show in front of everyone else. <laughs> it is gross. <laughs> yeah, so the Cybermancus, as I was saying, um, it's like a mix of hard surface and organic. Um, I was uh, kind of just getting into the hard surface stuff on the characters when he came along, um, especially for ZBrush. I'd seen Jace do some like crazy work uh, with ZBrush and hard surface on the Revenant. So I wanted to give that a crack. Um, so he's kind of half and half Maya and, um, and ZBrush. Um, yeah, I just kind of tested some pieces. And it worked out really well. So after that, like, I was like all ZBrush for hard surface. So um, yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That's a really uh, important note since, you know, talking about how we implemented uh, ZBrush in our pipeline. Is like prior to this project, most of us had just, you know, not done much hard surface in ZBrush. Um, I'll, I'll talk on the Revenant a little bit later, later when we get to them in the, in the slides here, but um, the, the definitely diving in and like me and Den's, that this was the first project we just, and I, 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 how I did it was I was just like, I'm going to just basically, here's Revenant, I'm like, I'm not going to mess around, I'm just going to make it in ZBrush, I don't care, like the learning curve, whatever, we took, yeah. just took the time and we did it. <clears throat> and that was really cool because the Revenant was the first one that we did that way and then Den's took, I shared what I knew of it, and, and Dens took it and built on it. So it's kind of like a really like evolutionary process in the studio. It's like, oh, uh, let me, you know, it evolves from character arts to character arts with like our tips and techniques of how to build things. And that was, it was pretty exciting what we were able to do with ZBrush and just watching it grow like that. Like, I, I mean, it's like it was pretty gnarly. Yeah, uh, it's I a really pretty common thing with the character team, which is uh, like really awesome being part of it because there is that leapfrogging of each other, like where. Always learning from each other and like not in competition, but we want to step up um, to each other's I'm games. Crush so. the competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, there it, it is. We're we're all really close. Um, uh, Evgeny Bischoff, uh, who works remotely for us now, he is uh, one of the other character artists uh, okay. that was on it. <laughs> and if the machine, yeah, he's a the machine. machine. He was one of the dudes on uh, Crisis, so he is like uh, very old school Max, impeccable hard surface skills, and like I've done some work kind of trying to do his way, and I'm doing another hard surface now more the ZBrush way. Um, but the coolest thing about like what these guys are saying is, and I, I think it's talking about game pipeline, is like you guys have to be close with each other because, um, you know, they're basically your hetero life mates. Like, I see this dude more than I see my kid in a day. Uh, and it's like, the thing is, you'll do something, and then someone will come by and be like, that's cool looking. We use snipping tool a lot. It's just part of Windows. If you just go down and type in snipping tool, it's just, you pull it up, you can circle stuff. It's like an art director's best friend. And we'll just use snipping tool and grab quick shots of what someone's doing on. And that bar, that leapfrogging is yeah, happening yeah, a lot. Like, oh, you did that really well. And then, oh, so-and-so interjected this and, or found yeah. this alpha. And I couldn't express that really 
more. I mean, I may be the lead at, at it, but to me, it's just like a team that I'm like kind of maybe a point man on. Um, and, and we definitely have this synergy going where it's like, it doesn't matter who, uh, I, a good idea can come from anywhere and that's all that matters. Best idea wins and we just kind of share and build on that. And it's pretty awesome. I love it when I come to work and I do something and then Dens takes that and improves it. And I'm like, that's the new bar. It does, I don't care. Even Emmanuel, Emmanuel is our, our, our newest member here. He's Emmanuel, out in the crowd you a little somewhere. hand up in the crowd there, Emmanuel? But I mean, he's... <laughs> Higher, higher. Get a little bit higher. Let's <laughs> get a round of applause yeah. for Emmanuel. Yeah. Young gun, young gun. Uh, uh, Emmanuel joined us uh, roughly a year ago, and like he came in running hot, and like I mean, he's brought good good ideas to the team. So we just kind of like build on that, and I really love that energy we have. We're really actually not to say, it may sound corny, but we are a close knit group of guys. We're basically four. Afghani had um, the only reason he isn't here with us is because he ended up having to go back to Germany, but he works remotely for us um, because of family issues. But I mean, he was part of the club. I was just gonna mention the bottom half of that big guy is um, all ZBrush, and actually all the third read details um, is all ZBrush as well. So. I really like this shot. Actually, Brian took this shot before we came. Uh, just one of my favorite I got like hooked on that shots. cinematic mode. You're just like flying around, just taking like demon photos, just like, all right. <laughs> and because you can actually step through the frames as well. So one of the other things I'm going to show you is like a little, uh, some shots of the gore. And instead of doing a movie, because it just happened so fast, I literally just took like frame after frame after frame after frame out of the game for you guys. Yeah, that photo mode, we can get lost in it, man. It's just really crazy. As if you can, lit, like, yeah, like Brian just said, you can pause it, rotate around, and just hit the key and step through animations and, and yeah. with mess with the depth of field. It's like you can yeah. literally do that for hours. If any of you guys are like in the industry and you're working at a company that's introducing photo mode and stuff like that, though, I cannot. Like, it's funny though. I'll show you certain models where like I have clay tubes like all over the back of it, and you're like, that looks really unfinished. But like, I know how far to push something to where what's going to bake down, what's it going to look like when I texture it, and I'm like, ah, like it's good. But then when you get in a photo mode. And like the photo, like the camera at one point, we loaded up photo mode one time. We were like, what the hell is that? And we like kept zooming out and zooming out and zooming, and it was inside the cacodemon's mouth. Like, <laughs> where it was just like throat. this one like little thing just <laughs> hanging there and we just kept zooming. So like photo mode's awesome for artists, but then also as artists during production, you're just like, oh God, oh God, how close is that camera getting? Oh yeah, they're gonna like get the right up on the bottom of there. the foot or like in between the fingers where you have that one like baking error and you're like, dude, no one's ever gonna see that. Yeah, you and you see a photo <laughs> online where someone's like, check it out, here's a hand, and you're like. <laughs> yeah, we actually, in retrospect, I, I, I kind of, well, maybe I wouldn't want to show them, but we, have, we, we took some pretty ridiculous screenshots for the characters, I'm like, dude. Uh, we had one where Revenant was sitting on a bar. But oh, was, yeah, he's just <laughs> hanging out, just just sitting on a bar. And just like, how, 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 what are you thinking animation? about? <laughs> Demons and stuff. Yeah. I'm also, uh, actually, I'm going to pop this one up. One of the things we try to focus in a lot is really uh, uh, like interesting color schemes. You know, we don't want anything bland. We oh. wanted stuff to pop. Again, with the fast speed, um, with the design, everything, we want characters to read and pop, and we wanted interesting colors. And I really, really love that interesting, like, blue, teal, gr like, green that we use mm -hmm. for the paint on this guy. I think it yeah. pops, and I, I really just dig that stuff. And it's very simple. Like, there's not many colors on that guy because... Um no, that goes into the rules that you, you and Hugo talk about with, um, with color design and stuff. Like not making stuff too busy so it's readable from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like critiquing ourselves, and we've said this before, but you go through this point like with concept and with us texturing and you're like really thinking about it. And then it just got to this point that it'd be like, pull the sprite up. Just pull the sprite up. Like what, what color is the lost soul? What color yeah. is the cacodemon? Yeah. And you're just like, paint it like that. Like that's it. Go. Um, it, well, this is a good point. Like besides the cyber demon, it's one of the one of the newer uh, boss characters we did. That uh, I initially really roughly blocked this out, but uh, the Brian came in. That's uh, Brian came in at a really interesting time. The project it was like the last year, but it was like so beneficial. We needed somebody really bad, and it was awesome having Brian join the team. And he came in, hit the ground running, and just like tackled a bunch of stuff that was like such a godsend at the time. It's just a bunch um, of sweet stuff. Like, hey, do you want to make this flaming skull? I was like, oh, I got you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Jason blocked this guy out. This is one of the new bosses uh, for the game, and it was a really fun experience. I, I, I feel like I've made, I've made a lot of big creatures and other video games and stuff like this, but this guy was really interesting, where he went through, like, talk about development and building stuff. Like, this guy was probably one of the most challenging characters I've built in a game, because, like, at one point, like, there's, you can kind of see there's, like, a carapace, like, almost arrowhead shape 
that comes up where this like other creature that I built went inside of it and then it closed, so it was like this parasite. But at one point you can see how he kind of has like abdomens, like the shell. That whole thing was built at one point where it opened up. And there's four game, like when we had it opened and we put the creature inside there, it just didn't work for the game. Like it just was weird. And then talking about speed and where gameplay does determine what we do, it took too long because this thing was like, okay, one second, time out. <laughs> <laughs> Like doing all these things and like no matter how we worked it, it was just like, what are we waiting for? Just get inside there. Let's fight. So yeah. that's when we went with just the top piece. Yeah, because we don't, I mean, like in the game, like it's, we never took the, the whole goal was, a, I think only briefly a few times the camera was away from, I think, the player. Yeah. Um, and we don't want that. So it's kind of like, you've got like, just harken back to what we've been saying along the, along the way is that this stuff's got to resonate quick and fast and work. And, um, and it has to play into the designs. Uh, this, Emmanuel took the screenshot, and I love it. It's yeah, and um, cool. Emmanuel did the weapons for this guy as well, uh, and he did a really good, uh, great job of. It's kind of made out of. They're made out of similar materials as he is, and he did a fantastic job for matching the quality of that. Like, that's one thing I think all of us with the whole leapfrogging is. Everything kind of has to look like it comes from the same world, right? And I think that's one reason why it's very important to work closely with each other. Because like, if I just or, you know, like Jason goes in his office and just locks the door and does his own thing and we're not learning from each other, it's not going to look the same. I do yeah. do that sometimes to hide from Absolutely, Ryan. yeah. <laughs> Try to uh, avoid but, like, because, like, when this is up here, it doesn't have Jason's name on it. It doesn't have my name on it. Every character you see in the game is representative of all of us and Absolutely. the other character artists that were before us. So when you work in a game, you know, those of you that are trying to get into the game industry, like, you have to work in a team because... If you're the weak link, you're making everyone look like the weak link. But if you're the best, I'll, just, I'll, 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 I'll ride with that as well. <laughs> it's smart, yeah. I love it. Um, uh, this, this is a cool thing. Like, um, and as much as we harken back to Doom 1 and 2, we, did, we definitely still like Doom 3. We didn't like hate it. It was just we wanted to go back to the thing. And I think this is a homage to Kenneth Scott's style of work. Time, and, yeah. and, and the one thing in Doom 3 that kind of, we kind of threw, we wanted to like, hey, let's just take the Hell Knight in that direction. Um, and I, I really enjoyed working on this character. Yeah, I think when people think of the Hell Knight, you think of this. You don't... Doom 1 and 2 Hell Knight is just not as iconic as this. And well, yeah, this is, in, is like iconic in its own right. Like, it's... And also, it's, I it's think Doom, it's... for sure. Yeah. From a design standpoint, too, the Baron, if you go back to the old Doom characters, you've got the Baron of Hell and, yep. and, and the Hell Knight, and they're, they're different, but they're kind of similar. So, like, at least by removing this, we had a little bit more two distinct two characters. Oh, we have a question. I'm like, okay with taking a question? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Oh, by the way, a little, a little birdie just told me that Doom's on sale on Steam right now for 50% off. <laughs> uh, I did not know that. Clever get on it. Get it, guys. Audience. No excuse. First of all, yeah, if you don't have it, what's wrong with you? But uh. Okay, there's a question to the audience, but here's a question from online as well. The helmet and the weapons in the game have a noticeable, very high res. Did you use some specific techniques to make them look like that? I'm sorry, what was that again? The helmet? The, the helmet, helmet and the weapons in the game have a noticeable, hot, very high res. Did you use some specific technique to make them like that? No, um, I mean, well, there's no specific technique. The, the helmet and uh, the helmet and the Doom Marine, um, I didn't really focus on that because we didn't, that was more polygon modeling and the minor ZBrush. So to me, at this presentation, I wanted to focus on demons. But uh, I will throw a, a bone out to our, our weapons team and uh, prop modeling team. The weapons guys, they're amazing. All those dudes rock. Um, very impressive stuff. Uh, I don't know. I can't say what triangle count they used. I know they were decent. Mm. We did give, as much as a 60 FPS game, anything that's in your face, we spent time on. So they definitely got a higher budget. I just can't right. speak yeah. exactly on what the triangle count well, It's like count most first-person games where, like, if you're going to have arms, you know, you're obviously going to put a majority of your poly count in this area, you have a weapon you're going to put, because that's one, how you're interacting with the world, and that's what is like right there. And a, a lot of the, it's also important to, to note, like, if someone will tell me all day long, like, what do you want in a character? Do you want, like, PBR materials, or do you want more triangles? I'll take materials any day of the week. Yeah. yeah. Because you can chop, if two care, if it has a couple of edges, you know, big deal, but if the materials are <coughs> money and beautiful, with a, like a good render setup, it'll sell it every time. Your, your brain will be e easier to forgive on those areas. But, um, and I think that might have something to do with why they look so good. I mean, from the tech, tech angle of things, and we, our PBR system that came in, um, it was just I excellent. do feel like we have some pretty high textures. Yeah, yeah. Like we do, we when, do, I had, yeah, when I saw true. poly counts, I was like, all right, that's going to, I'm going to do work. But 
Like Definitely. I was on a MOBA before coming here, so like all the texture is pretty low. And I think the Lost Soul, which is like literally a flying flaming skull, like everything's 4K on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think absolutely. so. I was just like, oh, okay. And I gotta be honest, I got pulled back a few times for some 16Ks. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even know you could take gen, like dude, 16k maps. <laughs> Denzel's out of control on the Spider Mastermind. But it makes sense. It was huge, man. Aim for the, you know, aim for the. You gotta go for it, dude. <laughs> Get rich. Get rich, dude. <laughs> Get rich. Uh, this, was a, uh, this is a fan render, actually. I, 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 I love that shot. That's awesome. Renders, dude. I was just Definitely. like, why, why am I gonna take another screenshot when a fan took one better than I could grab? So I really enjoyed it. Here's another question from the floor over here. Sure. Follow the light. Hi. Uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, so the game has a very distinctive style, and I was uh, wondering if you can talk about how you arrived to like that style from organic and both uh, hard surface as well, and if you had a system for artists to follow in order for, like you said, for everything to look like it came from the same world. Oh, uh, actually, uh, well, we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the presentation, then, but I'll hit on it now lightly. Um, yes. We didn't have, um, I mean, of course we had images and stuff like that of characters, but honestly, we didn't have like a set style guide, but more of like bullet points. And, um, and we also had uh, uh, plenty of cool ideas. Like we referenced, uh, like I said earlier, like Evil Dead was a huge reference. I um, bought Evil Dead on, like I, I have many uh, copies of Evil Dead from VHS to, that's one of the tapes for young guys. Uh, I have DVD and Blu-ray and all that, but like I didn't have it streaming. It's like my first day at work, Hugo's just like, yeah, we like Evil Dead. So and I was like, boom, bought it and I watched it my first day at work. Also. I can't express, like honestly, a lot of our, our doom, like we're talking about high level, like bullet points, not like we're like the specific image, but like yeah. what inspires it. Well, a couple of films were like definitely Evil Dead, any 80s, like horror. Legend, like, like, Legend was a, like, yeah, for, that was more for hell, not for characters so much, yeah. but for the environment of hell and stuff, Legend was an inspiration. Um, Evil Dead, uh, heavy metal album covers, like old school stuff, Iron Maiden, um, like was, anything, those things were really I feel cool. like it was a really natural growth development where like people would try stuff from concept to props to environment. Like one thing we noticed is like pupils don't work in our game. Uh, oh yeah, that's a big one. We like tried that nothing, on the Revenant, it looked yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, because yeah. like a lot of our creatures don't have eyelids or very small eyelids. So when you have this like big white bulging eye and there's like a pupil in it, even if it's a larger pupil, then it kind of feels almost like um, where you can like sympathize with it. Mm -hmm. So I think we kind of like, I know like Jason and I are huge Jaws fans. Oh, I'm And for me, like some of the, you can tell a kid of the 80s, but like Jaws, uh, like Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees, they were always really scary to me because like it's just black. So there's like no way that you can essentially like, if like Jason Voorhees is like popping your eyeballs out, you can't look into his eyes and like get this human connection. And I feel like a lot of the creatures in Doom are similar where it's kind of the alternate where like there's these big, bright, white or red eyes and there's life in it, but it is like undead life. Like you're not gonna sympathize with the Revenant at yeah, yeah, ripping yeah. your arm off. It's kind of funny. You would think that wouldn't be that hard, but it was. Like, it was. I mean, with the I, Cacodemon, and then, like, oh, the Cacodemon yeah. with the Revenant, we tried all kinds of stuff. And at the end, we're like, let's just do, like, the zombie stuff as it resonated, like, the, like, the most. Mm -hmm. And um, because, like, I think it, one of the reasons why we tried, it might seem like a no-brainer to be like, oh, make zombie eyes or whatever like that. But when you do that, when you're trying to bring a lot of character into these guys, it's kind of challenging because if you don't have like an eye that can like you know but actually people can dilate it's like that's it's, you have to be a little more creative with uh, with animations and whatnot. But um, at, at the end, it just it kind of just worked out with yeah. uh, doing like the whole zombie thing. But it was actually pretty challenging. And uh, here's the uh, lost soul. I actually really love this render mm -hmm. of Brian's character. It's pretty pretty awesome. I did not render it. I sculpted it. Yeah, I was on a wedding, so thank you to these guys for rendering my stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this was like the very first thing I got to do at id. Like Jason said, I kind of came in at the tail end of the project. Uh, they were nice enough to hold one of the more uh, iconic creatures that was kind of left in the game for me. Uh, I'm pretty good at sculpting skulls now. I've sculpted <laughs> a lot of skulls, but that's, I'm and fine they, with that. And they that never get old. They never get old. Yeah, it doesn't get old. And it's on fire. Yes, yeah, you just douse it on fire. If it doesn't look good, just douse it on fire. But once again, that's something that I'll kind of hit on a little bit too, talking about like knowing when to push in. Like I'm saying like, hey, watch out for photo mode. Things are going to get detailed. But then like you have to talk to everyone in the pipeline because if I spend all this time painting something and then it goes to effects and they're like, all right. 
and you're just like, I painted that for four days. <laughs> it was a really fun character to work on. Uh, I don't know if this is appropriate, I might get in trouble, but uh, I put a lot of buttholes in the creatures <laughs> that I worked on, so there's like, in the back, I tried to like, I think about like form follows function, and I'll show some of the concepts that Hugo Martin did for this creature, and they were really loose. They were almost like digital napkin sketches, and he really let me kind of have fun with this guy. It's so like the whole back underside, there's like these weird nipples that go up into this like, it almost kind of looks like the, the head of the, you know, alien's uh, egg sac. So there's kind of these like two like little orifices that, that was like my idea of those were the ones that were basically like pumping out gas. And then the orifice under, uh, beneath it was basically uh, able to spark it. So hopefully there's like one super nerdy kid out there who's like, no, oh, this is great how they've got it to light on fire. <laughs> my way of describing the function. Oh, yeah. like, Actually, you know, another cool thing you might want to talk about with this guy, oh, probably will cover it in your thing, but it has kind of like, a, a, we try to work with as much of like, if we can change a silhouette, we would uh, do it. Yeah. And this guy definitely has like a neutral state, and then, fire! Yeah, and it's with color and silhouette. So basically the horns pop open, the jaw is, uh, got a really nice rig on it where it can open really wide, and then... You know, the color, the, I think the color is the biggest tell. Yeah. When they're flying around in groups, they're blue. And then uh, also then there's the audio cue. So once again, another example of like why you have to get along with your coworkers. Because, you know, yes, I did a high poly, low poly and textures for this. But there's so many people that it takes to get it to this point. And you want to talk about metal. That's like the most metal thing I've <laughs> yeah, ever seen. Yeah, it's awesome. A screaming skull with horns. Oh, the pinky. <laughs> Boy, we made a lot of versions of this guy before we arrived here. Um, fortunately, I can't show those. We're just going to show the finished product and stuff like that. But this guy was really cool, really challenging, too. Because if you look at the old Doom pinky, it's just a mouth with arms. And we tried that technique. Actually, the first one, Dens, actually did an iteration back in the day with the, where it was really roughed out in the beginning. Yeah, it was like almost like an interpretation yeah. of, the, uh, of the GIF. Yeah, yeah. and, then, like, and that, that's one thing. But some things don't translate. Yeah. to the next gen level of detail. That's something that I, in our ZBrush pipeline we did a lot too, is like um, some of the early stuff we would just block out real quick so they could play with it in the pipeline and then we would concept, you know, from, from not necessarily, the concept wouldn't be tied to that block in, there was just like an idea they could play with and the concept would develop on it and we would replace it. Mm. But, um, and, uh, and, 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 and we would evolve those characters in ZBrush quite a bit, like we would try a bunch of stuff and whatnot. The Pinky was, was a challenging character because, like I said, the way he is in Doom 1 and 2 was just mouth and arms. We tried a lot of versions, but it wasn't really working. And then we tried basically hunkering him down and kind of like, a, I wouldn't say he's a dinosaur, but like just two legs, but with arms with a little bit of talent to balance him out. Because he was so top heavy and hanging down. But we iterated on this in ZBrush, like, uh, I spent like a, a long, uh, probably about three months just going back and forth on, on, on uh, iterations of this guy yeah. to, to bring I, him there because it really we had to make him work and it was really challenging yeah. it was tough i think yeah. that's important to say too because uh, i i talked to a lot of students and i had a student recently talk to me uh chris cooner or actually he's not a student he's a professional he's a very talented guy uh character artist that i worked with briefly at high res and he was just kind of asking with high res being his first job like you know at high res we were cranking out these these characters for a moba but here there's so much iteration there's so much back and forth and that's with how these characters are perceived in that game and how characters are perceived in other games. And there was so much back and forth with, I remember at one point, uh, gameplay being a big thing with this. Oh, because yeah. Because they had like a, a, you know, basically the whole goal was to shoot him in the back. So like Jace did a good job of like, you can see how heavy the armor is in the front to the back. And I mean, I think that changed after like he was in game. Yeah, we had to, we had to work it So then more. It's, it is this kind of like back and forth. And I, I think there's always this like negative idea of like, oh, you guys couldn't make up your mind and you had to go back. And to me, that's actually a sign of a really good pipeline. I mean, granted, there is some, some give and take, but like the ability to look at something just because it's done doesn't mean it's, it's right. And to be able to, for our producers and everyone to objectively look at it and go back and fix it, I think that's a big deal. And it's way more successful now than if we would have just been like, well, it's done. So just like, yeah, that's I mean, it. I mean, I remember sometimes it can definitely be frustrating when we have like AI design, like, oh man, I don't know about this or blah, blah, blah. But like, it actually really works. Like, that is yeah. pivotal. I, I remember think you it, mentioned the, like Hugo too, like yes. what you say about Hugo pointing stuff out. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, plus it or like every time you. you, you yeah, well, like, so our, our art director, our creative director now, Hugo, he, you would do something, and you'd be like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm going to really impress everyone. Everyone's digging it. 
And Hugo's a really talented guy, and he'd come by, and he'd point something out to you, and you were like, swore, you're like, this is it, you're done. He'd point it out to you, and you were just like, oh, I have to change that now. And it wasn't because it was your art director telling you you had to change something, but it's because I feel we're lucky enough to have an art director that when you would point something out, it made it that much yeah, yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, like you, you had to do it in a sense of like, I can't not, not do that. That yeah. will make this character better. So it's like, yeah, it was for I'm the, for late, the best late, of the character. It, it wasn't yeah. changing it for changing it. Yeah, that, that's, that's a really good point in its character development, even with ZBrush all the way down the thing, was that like all our changes, I've definitely worked on stuff where things can spin out of control and somebody's changing this for no reason. They really were good ideas. And I think all our, we, when we moved in those directions, we were all like, totally behind them, like, you know, and so that, that definitely pushed stuff along yep. the way. And it, that, that's really awesome. I think the characters really worked so much because of that. Mm -hmm. so just some quick in-game screenshots of the pinky that Brian took. That photo mode. I love that one, too. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, uh, it brings me to the Revenant. Um, this was, like I said, I mentioned earlier in the presentation, this was our first, I was like, okay, I want to do some hard service in ZBrush and really commit to it. And the best way to do it was just you just do it. So I basically was like, I don't care, I'm not doing it. It's, I'm staying in ZBrush yeah. this whole this whole thing. <laughs> and um, it was awesome. It wasn't even that like, um, and th this was more of just using a lot of move tool, hard polish, kind of more of like a traditional sculpting method. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything too fancy because I was just getting my feet wet with it. Um, I think Denzel will cover this a little bit later, but then. I remember sharing some of my techniques with Denzen, and Denz took it to like the next level and built like a lot of technical stuff on top of it, to, uh, it in less like just brute force hard surfacing in ZBrush. Mm -hmm. But it was really cool and um, interesting, um, just going about it, because you have to think about, I, I thought about things a lot differently. Um, a lot of it was just using center pivot, centering and mirror, and then using um, a lot of the uh, screen rotation and, and um, and hard surface techniques, so I'd get one half side and then mirror it over, and then and um, and, and each piece just like that. Then when I get to, when I want to get enough of the pieces together, I would dynamesh it. Or not dynamesh it. Sorry. Um, no, yeah, dyna, dynamesh it together, and then polish them out, and then just build on that. And then dead, what I would do is when it would get heavy, then I would decimate down areas that I was content with. And if I had to come back and edit them, I would just then redynamize the higher stuff like that. Yeah. I won't touch too much on that because then you're going to cover some of these things right in your... Right yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's not much different. I don't think yeah. our techniques, but yeah. So seeing Jace um, do that whole thing in one package from start to end was like super inspiring because I think you say this as well, like if there's any chance you can just stay within one package, and not have to jump around all over the place. Um, it's just going to make your life a lot easier, and you're going to concentrate more on the artwork. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm having that problem at work right now, where like we did a, a workshop yesterday. Uh, so I was at home working on like a personal creature to show at this workshop, and it was like this big toad monster thing. So it's just like lumpy, bumpy monster thing. And then I'm doing something hard surface, and I'm doing it in Max, and having that freedom in ZBrush to just move stuff around, and then coming back to just like. Eh. It, it just, I'm totally switching gears when I go back after seeing this stuff. Like when we were working on it and rehearsing this, I was just like, I'm just jumping in the deep end and going to do it. Because for me, the less that I have to jump from program to program, and then the tools that ZBrush provides me with, just for me, even simple, something simple as the move brush or like move elastic, where I just have a big shape yeah. and I need to push it over here. Yeah. That's it. I'm not worried like, okay, uh, let me select these verts, move it up. Oh God, I missed one vert. It's all the way down there, and now I have to. You know, it's just. Yeah, we're. I, I have to say, like, as as has evolved over this project, I'm less and less in traditional 3D to the point where it's funny. Like, I open up a Turtle for 3 package, and it's a moment where I'm like, okay, what am I? All uh, right, let me. Okay, memory kick in here. Where's everything at? And, yeah. and then eventually I get it back, but it's kind of funny. Like, there's times where it's like, man, I haven't opened up three the biggest problem yeah. Long yeah. Time. The biggest problem I had in our project and recently was it had been so long since I went back into Max that I came in one day freaking out because it was in Korean. <laughs> <laughs> and for the longest time, I was like, who put my Max in Korean? We still haven't solved that. I was like, Sup Choi, where are you at? <laughs> you put this in Korean. He's like, dude, I did not touch that. <laughs> Yeah, we like that. That was a good one. That was not <laughs> good. Did you do it? I'm not saying. All right. <laughs> not uh, saying I didn't. This uh, this brings us to the Spider Mastermind, which is uh, basically Denz's baby. Um, <laughs> I, I, you're going to cover this too, or the, the iteration yeah. process on this. Yeah. We we'll actually will instead of talking about it, Denz will actually walk you through like how much things changed along the path and how we developed the character along the way. Yeah. But uh, I think this is a. 
uh, really challenging character just because, one, it's the, 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 the final character in the game. It's a massive character, and it's an iconic character, and it has hard surface and organic, and also this is another character Multiple that Den's parts, did. moving parts. Oh, it's huge. And uh, this is also one of the characters that Den's um, did. I love ZBrush. I have a heavy ZBrush. The, the Cyberbank was first, right? Yeah, or, so, um, yeah, this was... I didn't go outside of ZBrush for the whole project until, you know, low, low poly, obviously, but... Um, yeah, he was definitely one of the goals of uh, of doing that. It was a lot of fun because I think he, um, or is it a she? She, uh, technically, <laughs> I guess. Um, Spoiler. It really inca <laughs> Spoiler encapsulates um, all the stuff that we're about, you know, like with the the organics and the hard surface. Um, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it turned out really, really, really great. And as Jay's saying, um, it's pretty much. Pretty much brute force a lot of a lot of that hard surface stuff. There's no um, not much technical stuff going on. There's a lot of sculpting and hedge polish, um, but I love that. It feels like um, it's like your make it so like real clay. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it like feels nice like you're crafting and... something yeah. rather than doing something super technical. And there's something to be said with um, obviously you have to work fast um, and you need to work within a deadline. But I think there's also something to be said for enjoying the work you're doing as well. Yeah, and that's always going to help you to progress, so. and to make better artwork. I yeah. think because yeah, if you hate the process, yeah, there's going to be a giant turd on screen. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be very obvious. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. It's literally. Model. I just made it to it kill it's me. Just modeling <laughs> with your whack and pen like this. You're like, <laughs> um, but, but that actually brings us to the end of the the, like, the presentation slideshow aspect of things. Um, I'm going to be passing this off to Denz and Brian. They're going to walk through some. Uh, presentation stuff that actually stepped you through how we use yeah. ZBrush in our actual pipeline. So, uh, you going first there, tough guy? Yeah. All right. Dens is way better. So oh, wait, actually, he's got a, like a really nice hard surface shot. Some two beautiful uh, in-game screenshots. Actually, this is that's uh, a collectibles. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, we had a collectibles room in a game. If you collected, you could actually model. So this is cool ass, but little like little area of the game where you can actually load up the models in the model viewer and look at them up close and personal. And uh, I love how the colors and everything look, but. All right, Brian, that's all you, bud. I'll pass all the mic. Right. Hey, um, we, I will be, we will be putting these, uh, the, 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 these images up soon, uh, the, the high fidelity and range, so be looking forward to that. We'll be putting on ZBrush Central and whatnot soon. I do have a few images to show, but hopefully that they're kind of worth it. You'll, you'll see some stuff that you might not have seen before. Uh, these are Hugo Martin's uh, sketches for what the Lost Soul uh, was going to be. So I literally came in, and it's like day one, and it's like, all right, download Evil Dead, start watching Evil Dead, and I'm given these drawings. And I was just like, uh, which one do you want me to make? Like, what's <laughs> up? And he's just like, you know, uh, like, try this one. I was like, okay, and this is it passive, this is it aggressive, this is kind of like a different option with these big jaws, and then there were these sketches of just, you know, just, it's Hugo's exploration sketches. Uh, at one point further down the road when I had blocked stuff out, he took another pass at it, kicked it back to me, I tried something else. Um, hey, Brian, can, I, can, you, can, you, please? can you print the concept real quick? Uh, I'm harking back to the question earlier about what do we use for design and like what do we keep things to something. There's a term that evolved in the beginning called like creature wiggles and it then evolved into creature curves. And if you look at, Brian can kind of show you what we're talking about with this, that we kept in our design, but we kept really irregular shapes and, and, the, and the ratio of thirds and whatnot just to get interesting curves and knickknacks. We covered this a good bit in our workshop yesterday, but um, for those that, uh, that weren't able to attend, um, you know, You'll, you'll see this in a lot of our models, and it, that's definitely uh, part of what uh, our language that we carry across yeah. all characters. Yeah. Definitely that, that style. In, uh, um, to keep, to keep the, uh, the, the continuity across, yeah. across the board. So. And there's something, um, we would go back to older characters, and to characters that we did, actually, and apply those techniques, and it makes the world of difference. It the, seems the something so small, like, but I think it's like the question about style earlier. If you want to make creatures for Doom, no pupils and creature curves are yeah. like the two yeah. first benchmarks. Um, so like, I was really excited. My family was still in Atlanta, so like, I just got there and just saw what these guys were doing and just basically wanted to pump out as much work as possible. So for like 
Oh, and then there was like, I think it was like my second week there, there was like this like meeting where everyone was showing work and stuff like that, and it was my goal to have stuff to show. So I basically tried to do a, a skull a day to show, and these were kind of like my first passes, because I did one pretty quickly, and Hugo was like, oh, that's looking cool, like you did that pretty fast, can you just do the other ones as well, like to explore it? So I was like, sure, like let's go. So. The way that helped this is what's going to show you when I set up the Z tool, where like a lot of these are all separate subtools. And I know certain people might complain about organizing subtools, blah, 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 whatever. Like, I like having as many subtools as possible because it allows me to iterate. This is something that I developed when I was doing um, like a lot of 3D concept work, where I'm just swapping out heads, swapping out different teeth, just trying to find something that works. And I, I really appreciate Hugo letting me, and, and Jason as well, um, just explore this creature. Um, as much as possible. It was definitely like a career highlight. Uh, one of the other things I'll show you is uh, I throw color on as early as possible. Because hopefully, like you guys in the distance back there, like this isn't done. You can see clay tubes all over it, but hopefully it's presenting the idea to you as quickly as possible. That, that block out image is there. Um, we tried some other ones. Uh, these were kind of as, or Hugo, I kicked it back to him. He did a little sketch. Uh, we're really into uh, like a lot of, I, I believe, like uh, Japanese, like Takeya. At one point, like this got like really beetly, and we we're gonna try like these dark colors, and we we're just exploring, just trying stuff. Um, He's worth talking about too. That was a different. Yeah, question. that was definitely at one point. It, like I think the twins. Like I yeah. spent a lot of times. Like I'm a pretty big like resin model kit nerd, uh, but there was like a lot of the Japanese stuff. Like I didn't know a ton of, about. Like I was given a this book a while ago um, from a buddy called like Creature Core. And uh, it's an excellent book. Yeah, it just kind of really made me realize I'm awful, uh, but was also like inspiring enough that I was like, okay, like let's try some stuff. So I, I definitely looked at uh, some of his work was referenced a lot. Um, it was cool, but it just didn't fit our game. Like it didn't work totally. Like there's elements that fit, but there's elements that don't. Uh, one of the other things that we did is uh, just explored eye options, and this was coming down to when we were talking about. Okay, so we kind of knew we weren't using pupils, but we did this whole, like this, this one I literally called A deadite, like the Z tool was A deadite, this was B bone, where there was essentially bones that could dilate around a pupil, there was C butthole. Uh, everything. He's got a theme everything. going on. Has a butthole. I just want to say that's the second time I've said that in a major presentation. <laughs> I'm glad we represent our company. Uh, and then D is, uh, I don't know what I called that, but it's just kind of weird, a little asymmetrical, uh, something like that, but just different cool reveals and stuff like that. Uh, so I am going to uh, crank up ZBrush, and I'm going to load up the Z tool. Is ZBrush on this computer, Paul? <laughs> yeah, Paul. I just okay. think it's... Yeah, Paul, Paul, he's like, he said butthole too much. I'm out of here. <laughs> he's literally like disconnecting yeah, the internet. He's going to make the car go out. <laughs> yeah, we had the power go out in our presentation yesterday, the, or, or in our workshop. It was not Pixelogic's fault. It was like all of like Southern California, like these little areas and pockets and stuff like that. It was um, actually pretty cool. Uh, uh, even though the power went out, we got to just go outside and like kind of BS about design and creatures and stuff with the workshop guys. I actually, it was one of my favorite parts of the presentation, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. It was, it was like really a cool. nice icebreaker for us. I, hopefully, Peter, I heard you just asked for flashlight and a <laughs> yeah, and and clay. clay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open up the Lost Hole. This is the final Z, uh, Z tool that I, I, I came up with and I baked. Uh, I look like an environment artist right now because I've got that red wax on. <laughs> Sorry, character guy joke. Uh, <laughs> Peter Bohm is like the only person I've ever seen use like red wax and it look awesome. <laughs> Him and like Zach Petrock. And then like anytime I put red wax on something, it looks like my five-year-old daughter made it. Uh, I use basic material a lot, nothing too crazy. Sometimes I shift the lights around. All right, so this is the Z tool, and you can just kind of get a feeling for um, the amount of detail that I used. Uh, it's a, one of the smaller characters in the game. It moves very fast. It's on fire. I wanted there to be some details uh, for some of the smart material stuff that we use, because we will use like a lot of cavity maps and stuff like that to either put some dark in there, put dirt in there and stuff like that. So I'll kind of like overstate uh, some areas. Um, trying to find interesting shapes in the organics and uh, 
one thing for me that hopefully shows, if you look at it at a distance, is even though this has no color on it at this point, is that you're getting the sense of material breakup. So that you see there's areas that are bone, there's areas that are flesh, you know, and then even different types of flesh. So this was one of the interior pieces of the mouth that I broke off. And I knew the mouth was going to be opening a lot, so I just came in here and um, I looked at the inside of uh, camels' mouths. They're really interesting. Uh, camels, penguins, and I think it's like, is it leatherback turtles, is it? Oh, I think. Uh, yeah, it's like leatherback turtles are like literally just real life like dune worms and stuff. Like they're just terrifying looking. Like if you need just like a quick, a quick like inspiration overload for like creature mouths, like look at a camel's mouth. Uh, they're really gross. Like th this is t a tame camel. This isn't even like a wild camel. This is just, um, but so for me it was making sure that you have that element. And then kind of what I was talking about with being able to iterate quickly. Because I didn't know too, like for rigging, did they want me to sculpt this in the neutral position? Did they want, or the passive? Or did they want me to sculpt it in the aggressive? So I have a good bit of subtools. You can see I'm so organized and name them properly so well. I only name them when I'm like literally passing them off to someone else. Like if Dens had to take it, I'm like, oh, I'm so organized. But um, so we've just got all these different pieces. Uh, and what it allows me to do is just basically very quickly, you know, even the two front teeth, the reason those were broken off separately, because at one point they were just teeth across, and then was like, what if they had kind of like these large fangs on them? Um, with these pieces, I wanted to be able to topple them separately uh, so that I could actually get in here. And because like, if you look how close, you know, some of these areas are, not only does that help with iteration, but it helps me doing the low poly. Um, so basically, being able to break your subtools up, and I, uh, Paul, maybe you could back me up on this. What? Uh, if I have more subtools, and let's, like, let's say I have like a, a Z tool and it's got 10 subtools that is 50 million, that's going to run faster than if I had one tool that had 50 million. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. So it basically, was. being able to yeah. break up that uh, subtool list, you're going to be able to get more detail in there. Um, you can see here's where we'll get into uh, some of the awkwardness. But once again, just describing form following function. And there's certain things for me that when sculpting, like I really want these shapes to overlap one another. So being able to have this as a separate subtool so that you, you get these um, flaps, I guess, to kind of fold over. Um, I think it's important to note like too is that a lot of time in our character creation process in the beginning, we'll just get roughly all these things in one mesh, you know, kind of just busting stuff out. And then eventually, at some point, we will start pulling these pieces off that need to be their own separate entity yep. for a couple of reasons. One, because it's more natural to see things go, it, it, two things going into one another, and two, you get the resolution out of it. So um, that's definitely part of our process. So one of the other things that I do a lot is, um, and this is kind of, we'll show you, like, you can literally, this is, the production asset. Like, I'm not hiding anything from you guys. This is like slightly terrifying for me. Um, the only thing more terrifying is loading a 3D model onto like ArtStation where someone can zoom in <laughs> around and around. Uh, but like, look, there's just straight up like clay tubes there for days. But once again, like thinking about production, and uh, I learned this from an uh, uh, artist that I worked with at Sony, James Van and Bogart, where he would just get stuff done so fast and he would just burn through it. And he was awesome at prioritizing what needed to be done. While like at that point in my career, I was so worried about impressing my peers that I detailed every nook and cranny. But like you guys would have never seen this if I wasn't dumb enough to open it up and bring it to a giant <laughs> well, I, I, and show everyone. I, I, some of that isn't because we would put like some high fidelity uh, like you know, in normal the texture stuff in the texture. Yeah, yeah we would uh, do that. that. Was some, so that you know poor maps and like you know. Yep. Some, and getting Brian on uh, really, I think, stepped up that, that aspect of uh, all, all of our sculpting mm -hmm. um, with the details, just with the, the whole leapfrogging thing. So one thing that uh, I think the guys kind of liked, uh, and it was weird. This is something that I did not think that would kind of like, and I don't know, they went, the first time I did it, they were like, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. You should do that more. 
is talking about throwing color on really quickly. And the first thing I do is I throw color on the eyes. So I wanted to give you guys a, a quick demo, um, basically on how to able to present something, even though it's not fully textured, but just give it a little bit more life instead of just this gray model. Um, so I'm on the eye subtool, and I've got the toy plastic shader on. And I'm going to go to color, fill object. So now when I go back to the basic material, you'll see what I've done is basically just applied the toy plastic material to the eye, OK? So the first step is basically just getting that material break up. Toy plastic, I think we've at work just come to be like, this is just the best like greasy shader. Yeah. Somebody per needs to look eyes. wet. There you go. Um, and kind of, I'll just kind of like maybe try to recreate um, not exactly the same eye, but just an eye that has some depth on it. Uh, also, one thing too, this is one of the things that Hugo pointed out to me that I was like, dude, you're crazy, but it's the almond eye, where like the actual eyeball itself is this uh, kind of a more fantastical shape of what an eye would be. And I remember when he first told me that, that was the only time like I questioned him. I was like, this dude is crazy, like what are you talking about? <laughs> and it's weird that I question it. It's literally a flying, flaming skull, and I was like, are you mad, man? You can't have almond-shaped eyes. <laughs> have some respect for the genre. <laughs> And then I moved it, and I was like, oh, OK, yep, that's pretty sweet. Actually, a lot of our characters have really, absurd, really a bizarre shape. Yeah. Uh, so then the next thing I'm going to do is just basically start to kind of grab some color. You'll see the other subtools, they're just changing colors, because I haven't applied uh, a color or material to them. Uh, so that's really no big deal. And now I'm just switching from material to color. We'll start with something maybe even a little bit darker. And then what I'm going to do is like maybe I'll kind of do some like burning red eye or something like this, is I just start to kind of build up my colors. I have standard on. I don't have Z add. I don't have Z sub on. When I do hit shift, one thing I will leave on is um, that I'm smoothing color so that I can kind of create like a little bit of a gradient. So you can not only uh, smooth the surface of your model, but you can smooth out color as well. I actually really love the ability to that, that, that smoothing in polypaint is such a great gradient way to shift between colors. It just works so well. I'm going to turn Especially at lower resolutions, you can really like bleed in a lot of color. The lazy mouse. If you guys have questions while I'm working as well, please feel free to ask them. This is just kind of a quick, I, I really wanted to show you guys, like there's so many awesome presentations, there's so many cool tutorials online on how to do this and how to do that, but I wanted to give you just like some very simple practical, real-world tips on things that I do on a daily basis to make sure I don't get fired. <laughs> there, here's a question from online. <clears throat> and by the way, just so you guys know, you got about 35 minutes left. Okay. okay. Um, what is its software looking for in a portfolio for someone that wants to be a character artist? P.S. You rock, guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks, man. That, I, I, what we're looking for uh, for character artists at id is it's hard to be a master of everything because we do a lot of hard surface and we do a lot of organic stuff but um, as long as like you're dominant in one area and proficient in the other I'll work with that like I'm looking at just skill period um, and, uh, and I think it's kind of it's interesting because if you look at Brian's background it's mostly organic but he does do some hard surface and he also came will very willing and open minded to like I will I'm down I will yeah. totally do these things and um, I, I'm, I'm pretty much right down the middle, even though, to be honest with you, minus the Doom Marine the last couple of years, like, I've been straight up organics mostly. Um, and Denz is split down the middle. And uh, when we had Afghani, uh, Afghani is on the other side of things. He mostly did a uh, hard surface, mm -hmm. um, but he did do organic as well. Like, it, and uh, I think it's important to have both set skill sets. You don't have to be awesome at everything, but pick, pick one, be good, strong at it, but be proficient in the other. You know what I mean? That's kind of what we're looking for. You also have to have that willingness. That was like, the, I felt like my interview went really well, but I was just like dreading the, uh, could we see some of your hard surface examples? And it was like, it went well, and then like as Hugo and Jason were kind of like ending the call, they're like, hey, well, hey, 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 uh, like, are you open to doing hard surface? And I think that was honestly like one of the only kind of hopefully tough questions in the interview, because it was like, oh, no, yeah, yeah. that is not going to happen. I, I only sculpt flaming skulls. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have a lot of those. Uh, it's also Im important to me and the team not to keep people fixated on one strength. I think you're stronger if you spread your wealth. I mean, we get in a pinch and we need to make something quicker, 
and I'm definitely gonna, we're going to talk about well, let's like play this to someone's strength for sure. But when we have the time and whatever, it's like let's stretch your wings and put you out, and it puts you in a place where you're not comfortable, and um, and give you a real challenge. So that's how we kind of so spread just, the wealth. As we're talking, I'm kind of just doing different examples, like just testing stuff. And basically for me what it is when, when blocking out an eye, like even that already starts to look kind of interesting. The all black, you gotta be careful with that. Sometimes for me it's kind of like a baby-like or like you look at like a small cute little animal. It's kind of, it's almost like a giant pupil. But I'll start to build uh, layers. So where you, and the other thing that we do a lot in that I would say probably is like a third hallmark of character creation for uh, Doom creatures uh, is gradients. Yeah, all big That's time. gradients in forms, uh, that's gradient in shapes. Like if you look at this secondary shape here, one of the details that you have are kind of these like um, protuberances coming off. Notice how they're it gradiating from small to large and then the spacing in between them. Um, or these lines coming here how they're gradating down across uh, this way. One thing we focus on a lot on, on our texture, uh, on our creatures is also is like, you don't want to overcomplicate things. It's kind of like, uh, basically it's a gallon of one, quarter of another, and then uh, a teaspoon of another color. It doesn't mean you have only three colors on your model. You have three dominant colors. And the accent can be an accent sometimes as tiny as just eyes, it's light. But you can have like, you can go from a gray to a cream color, just pick two colors and gradient between them, and then introduce all kinds of other colors in there that are not as dominant to actually add to the creature. But the thing is, we call it like the squint test or whatever like that. When you zoom out, what do you, what do you, what resonates, what stands out? And it's the simplicity of those, those color shifts and those gradients are, are, are huge. But you can still have a lot of other color in there that make things way interesting, but there, there always will be stuff dominant. If you add too much, it's gonna get ugly and muddy. So, I'm just going to make sure I'm at one of the higher subdivision levels now. Give this a quick smooth. You'll see that gradient, and I've blocked things out. You have a gradient going from basically the corners to the center, and there's also a slight gradient where I don't, because especially with PBR, like I'm not really painting lighting information in, but like I know for the fact when, when we were building this character and I asked, are the eyelids going to be separate? Like the eyelids are baked and the eye are one thing. Like, the polygons here, I think it was literally like six polygons just kind of going over that surface. So I had a little bit of liberty to kind of come in and grab like a, a darker color like this and basically kind of fake um, a little bit of that upper eyelid going across there. One thing when I'm painting is I never try to use like pure black or pure white. Everything's going to have like a little bit of a dab of color in it just feels like a little bit more natural. I'm sure there's probably some other sm way smarter explanation of that. I think I got that from like a, like a James Gurney, like a painting with, I forget the name of the book. Sorry about that. Um, and then I will kind of do a little detail pass where I'll kind of come in and kind of pop stuff off. Just turn off that dynamic. Soften some of that out. And if you wanted to, this is like one of the awesome things about uh, ZBrush, and I, I do do this. I'll turn on Z Add as well. So actually, let's take a few steps back on that. And maybe I'll give this one more subdivision level. So now I'll get a little bit of this in my normal as well. And I do this very early on, like the very first day I start a creature, one of the first things I do is the eyes. So this is the, you know, the ending model that I would be using to bake, but this is one of the very, very, very first steps I do. And that makes it so when Jason comes by, Dens comes by, anyone from the team comes by, hopefully this is going to jump off the screen at them a little bit more and give it a little bit more life. 
So just for the sake of time, I think we're going to jump over to Dens. If we have a little bit of time left over, we've got like one or two other things we can show you, but I, I really, really want you guys to see uh, some of Dens' uh, awesome work and some of his ZBrush hard surface stuff. So I hope you uh, enjoyed these few techniques on how to basically kind of uh, manage and prioritize your actual Z tool. Uh, and then throwing on a little bit of color to kind of catch the eyes of your coworkers and kind of lead to getting things approved. Catching your eyes of your coworkers. Well, hey, I, yo. listen, I do that every day. <laughs> awesome, dude. Damn, Dens. <laughs> Is this, is this still working? Yeah. yeah oh, you're it. mic'd. <laughs> Hot mic. Uh, I'm just going to get set up for a second here. At any point, too, like while Denz is working, like Jason and I are here, ask questions. He's going to be showing you stuff, questions online. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have a little bit of time at the end. Keep a lie. Let's have him. We'll do a little, little Q&A, possibly. Uh, don't give maybe. No. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when I don't, we're extending the time a little bit from the the miss the change already. So. All right. Um, so this is Olivia. She's the um, the main the main villain in Doom. I'm just gonna kind of go over um, the process of iteration we went with her, and kind of talk about the hard surface bits. Um, By the way, Dent is Australian. I call it Zed Rush. Zed Rush. <laughs> Said, you can correct? trust him, though. Like, <laughs> we get his zero. If you didn't, <laughs> it's fine, Dan. I apologize, I'm, I'm but I'm not going to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Go with it. I'm Canadian. I get it. Um, yeah, so I think this. Uh, she was actually before the Cyber Mancubus, um, or m maybe after, actually. Um, but she had like a little bit of hard surface, so I wanted to take her... Um, fully uh, through the whole ZBrush pipeline, and I thought that would be a good test, because she's kind of a mi mix of everything. Um, I actually didn't end up, I ended up not leaving ZBrush at all uh, for her until the low poly, so uh, there's just some shots. And that was a, uh, a community shot, actually. It was a really cool one. So this is, um, the block out stage, basically, maybe a little bit more evolved, but um, as you can see, things are pretty uh, pretty blobby, but it, we're getting the main shapes in there. And at this stage, uh, we would be ready to hand this off um, for evaluation to Jason, the other guys in the character team, and Hugo as well, and also the, the concept artist. Uh, this was designed by Alex Palmer. <coughs> So things are, um, you know, pretty blobby. They're a bit loose. They're not really clean. They're a bit wobbly, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You're just looking for the main read on the shapes. Oh, thanks. Uh, so this is kind of after some iterations, working with Alex and Hugo, uh, looking for for some flow. With these shapes, like you can see here, we have uh, her rib cage kind of coming down. Over here, we, you can see we tried the rib cage kind of rolling up. And that's another thing, big thing that Hugo will talk about uh, is the flow and how everything, you want everything to kind of uh, flow around the character to catch your eye. Uh, I think at this stage, the legs uh, weren't really working. So uh, this, um, this is like the cleanup stage where everything's got, uh, been approved and we're just cleaning up the shapes. So all the major forms um, and pieces are in place and they've been approved and we're just adding like bevels, chamfers and just making the shapes a bit nicer, a bit more hard surfacey. Uh, that's mainly a lot of um, H polish basically, that's it. We spent a lot of time with that H polish brush. Yeah, yeah. You Kudos should definitely to whoever made the H polish. Child. Name your first child H brush. <laughs> H polish. Uh, this is more of the same. Just more cleaning, so it's getting a little bit less wobbly. Uh, starting to add little pieces, a little bit of third read stuff with the uh, damn standard. 
but still not quite there. And I think this is the final, yeah. So I've cleaned up all the pieces, um, cleaned up the bevels, and uh, added all the third read stuff. With the third read stuff, you don't want to go overboard. You want to keep to uh, the same kind of rules of thirds that Jason was talking about before. Otherwise, it just gets uh, too noisy. You want some nice rest areas. And then that's just taking it to key shot, so. Yeah, we really evolved this character along the way, so. Yeah, yeah, she went through uh, a fair few changes. Um, but they were all for the better, so. Uh, this is more like a block-in. Um, the shapes are a bit more refined. Adding uh, the tubes and basically all the pieces that I'll need uh, in order to sculpt them up. The the face with Olivia in there kind of wasn't sitting right with everyone. Uh, it just wasn't reading from a distance. So we tried some things. You can see here we've got a uh, just a visor on top to mimic like an eye, an eyeball of an animal, and I think that works a bit better. Uh, yeah. So as I was saying, um, this kind of shows the different stages uh, going along. So this is uh, the body. You get, it's like really kind of blocking stage. Um, the legs. Uh, is, a, is a little bit further on in the, in the block in refining the shapes, uh, adding some bevels, and um, yeah, just cleaning things overall. Uh, the front legs are pretty much done. We've added the, uh, the third read stuff, all the little details and greebles to the hard surface pieces. Uh, one thing, this is one thing you shouldn't do, is um, do the, the pieces that matter the most first. You should always do uh, them last because guaranteed every time uh, the last piece is always going to come out better. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that kind of uh, yeah. the board now, but. Yeah, I learned that lesson. The, I think the back leg um, was a lot more successful in terms of uh, the flow and shapes and uh, actually the, the third read stuff as well. Um, so, this is a lot more refined. Uh, we gave some thickness to the visor, and she's still in there. Uh, but uh, as a team, uh, I don't think we're really feeling it still. Um, I think the project was like really moving along. Jason has just done the Revenant, um, and we're really heading in that, that rock and roll metal direction. And we just weren't uh, feeling this. So when you, oh, we tried a few other things add some kind of like mandibles to make that more like a face, maybe try some visor gooey, um, but still, I, I don't, it's, it looks cool, but it's not um, what Doom was hitting at the time, so. Uh, when you Google uh, Spider Mastermind. Oh. It's really cool, by the way, at the id office, I was segue into this, we, they have a lot of the original uh, maquettes that are in Doom around, around the building in glass cases, which I still love Look at those things. They're yeah. just yeah. awesome seeing those yeah. sitting there. And this one's designed by Greg Punches. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. And that's like, yeah, that's metal as hell. Yeah, there's like a physical one of those in the office. Yeah. So uh, why not? Let's just try and chuck a face in there. Um, this literally took like 15, 20 minutes. Um, it doesn't look amazing or anything. It's all uh, blobby, but instantly, like, I think. Uh, for me, anyway, personally, like that, um, I think that was all, it. Like, we all, we all yeah. saw that and we are like, uh, yeah, that's the way yeah. we in that direction, like that's, immediately. Yeah, that's definitely uh, doom, so. Uh, a bit more iteration on the face, uh, chuck some arms in there. And that's really the power of ZBrush, I think, is being able to iterate really fast um, and just try different things. Like if you had to sit there and polymodel like a face for a day and then it doesn't work out, uh, you're going to be less inclined to go ahead and do it. And that's the final face that we ended up with. So, yeah, I think that in the end, um, that was a lot more, it was a lot of more work, but um, a lot more successful in the end. I think this is another good example of gradients. Like, you look at the ridge going down the center of the face, you look at the forms that were around the eyes. Once again, it's not just color, but it's having shapes gradient across one another. Okay, I'm just gonna 
do a little demo on the hard surface stuff. I just want to open that. <laughs> Paint. Just hit OK for that one. Is it open now? I oh, guess, yeah. yeah. So, um, actually, I can just open this in ZBrush. Yeah, that's the piece um, I'm going to be demoing. Um, actually, let me just open it. Now, if there's any questions as well, Paul, you can just feel free to shoot. So. You got one here on the floor. La. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, I am a big fan of your work. It's awesome. I really love Doom. Thank you. Uh, it makes my computer cry every time I play it. So, <laughs> um, uh, my question is, uh, how much time it takes you to, to create a full character? That is a, a difficult question to answer because uh, the iconicness of them, it, it depends on, like, let's, I can, like, blanket statement and talk about some of the uh, iconic more iconic characters we spent time on. If we have a completed concept ready to go in this organic character at roughly between one and a half, two months, that's, I'm talking like single manifold, like an imp or something like that. When you add in mechanical stuff on top of it, that actually sends a deadline out. To get, so basically, bosses, you know, we only had a couple of them, so we spent about three months usually on them, and that's with all the iteration phases and stuff like that. Um, but if it's, a, like I said, like a cannon fighter character, like an imp, some more of the like, below, like zombies or something like that, roughly one to two, to two months, depending on the complexity. And then uh, some of the other characters went three to four months, but that wasn't like, that wasn't from here's a concept lock to creation, it was evolving it back and forth. So it's kind of really hard to put exactly how long we would do to a character, but generally between one and a half to two months. And if yeah. it's a bigger boss, it would it's spread a little bit past that, and that's with a lot of iteration yeah. time. But. The thing that I learned the most at id, compared to other places I've learned in the past, and I think a big, especially like our character producer, Tommy, mm -hmm. is awesome at giving us the appropriate amount of time that we need to get something done right. Not get something done, get something done right. And I think, especially me, I'm, I'm kind of at this age where like I don't, there's that element of like I was that first week wanting to finish stuff and get stuff in and, and press, and I got this done in a day, I got this done in a week, but like I'm more worried about getting it done right, like measure twice, cut once type of thing, and having that time to iterate than just being like, oh, this is it. Like, th that's all we had time for. This is what you get. So, um, so I'm just blocking out um, a piece here, and I've just attached a, uh, oh, appended a, um, a sphere, and just trying to find uh, some decent shapes. Got a question here from online. Dukowski. Is there a bias in hiring only those that have previous game experience? Some of us pros can easily transition. No, I don't have any bias at all. I, I worked in cinematic slash film before I get into games. I just came over. I'm more concerned about if I'm hiring somebody, it's attitude, talent, and what I can see. I can teach any, we can teach anybody the technical side of things. If they have the right attitude and the talent, um, you know, and I mean, there, there is some technical, you know, you gotta have yeah. some know-how, you know, and some it, it, motivation. If you, I would suggest if you weren't in games and you wanted to work in games, then you would try to like figure some of the pipeline out, you know, with yeah. all the material online. Yeah. But I wouldn't say like, I'm not gonna, if I saw you an awesome portfolio of talent, I wouldn't be yeah. like, oh, you don't work in games? I'm not touching you. No, I would never do that. Yeah, I mean like one of our concept guys, and granted concept's a little different, um, but Alex Palma came from Spectral Motion, like a special makeup effects company. Uh, I first started the industry as a special makeup effects artist for like an incredibly small amount of time. Like working in games was going to be my backup plan in case I couldn't get on enough movies or whatever. And it just happened to go different. It's like what Jay said, you're basically just building a skill set. And I think that's one of the cool things about ZBrush, like you can do, we have demos from guys that are doing VR, jewelry, games, Ugh. films. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I was, just, I was just figuring out why I couldn't get the smooth to go, and uh, someone just, a oh, uh, very sorry. nice man, <laughs> Brian told me that. Brian once again. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you throw me under the bus, Guys, it's always uh, Brian's like, fault. There's like a, I'm just waiting for like people coming up with like pitchforks and. Uh, yeah. Burn uh, the witch! You got, unfortunately, Denzel, there's only about 10 minutes left. Why isn't that smoothing, dude? You want to kick some? Do a reset all. Go to brushes, do a reset yeah, all brushes. Oh, okay. 
We got it. That will be, uh, sorry, if it was like standard, uh, it would be dependent on that brush. Sorry, guys. All right. Here we go. So uh, it's just a lot of uh, the smooth, uh, the move brush and smooth. I'm just trying to keep everything uh, pretty blobby and smooth just to help keep the shape. This is actually pretty important to see, too, because I, I think the, the big thing to note that for me, it took me a long time. Like, I'm still very nervous doing hard surface with these guys. Uh, they're doing a great job at it. But when Dens has been giving me demos at work and showing me earlier iterations of models, there's like a sense of like, oh, like, I, I can do that. I can get to that point. But like the first time I ever saw Olivia, and he's like, turned around, he's like, I did that all in ZBrush. I was just like, cool, great. Um, do you just want me to quit now? Or like, how does this work? <laughs> do I just leave this here? But I think seeing stuff build up, and it's just like, for me, hard surface, what it's taken me so long to understand is it's just like any other piece of artwork, whether it's a life drawing, uh, whether it's a monster, it is this big shape, and then it's sneaking up on it, and it's building those primary forms, the secondary forms, the, the third forms. Yeah. So uh, I just dynameshed it and added some, some topology, so it's a bit higher res now, so I can start figuring the shape out. Uh, and I'm just using the H polish to kind of clean this up. Uh, give it some bevels. Actually, I love to use uh, this diamond alpha because it lets you not overshoot the form when you're using it, so you can get like nice square. Just going around. A lot of H polish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So that's looking pretty decent. And when I get it to a stage that I'm happy with, um, I'll just come in. Uh, a cool way to, actually I'll just divide this maybe once. A cool way to uh, smooth your mesh out with, um, while holding the edges is using this uh, polygroups option, uh, regroup by edges. And what that's going to do is, grab the edges and turn those into a polygroup. Sometimes you just got to kind of play around with the, the settings there. Maybe one more division. There we go. And uh, just clean it up a little bit more. And what you can do is mask uh, that area out, invert it, and then just smooth uh, and turn the dot on. That's going to really hit that pretty strong. Actually, soften this out a bit. So that's just going to help you get a, a cleaner shape. And I'll just be constantly smoothing. So one of the goals that I'm always trying to keep in mind is uh, making sure this looks clean. I'll give that maybe one more subdivision. So that might be uh, like a cleaned up, cleaned up mesh, and uh, be ready for some uh, more third read details. 
So one of the ways I like to add cuts um, is by grouping sections off and using the, uh, what is it called, the uh, edge loop mask border. So you can just paint this stuff in uh, with the lazy mouse. And you don't want too many cut lines um, on your pieces. You kind of want to keep them uh, towards the edges as well, just so they don't override uh, the dominant form of the piece itself. Again, that comes back to that third stuff that um, Jason was talking about before. So I'm just sectioning off a piece. That's actually probably a bit too even. Um, and I'll do one more. How are we for time, Paul? OK, cool. Sorry. That's all good? It's been pretty cool through this whole summit. Actually, through the workshop yesterday and today is watching these guys work. I mean, yeah, we work together, but I mean, it's not like we sit right beside each other and watch each other work for 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> so I've just really got a kick out of watching some workflow stuff. I've actually learned, you know, even our workshop you know, now, I mean, with Dens here now, and in the workshop yesterday with Brian, uh, yeah, like, uh, I just never watch each other work, I was mouse. like, man, this is some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> I never use a lazy mouse, and now. <laughs> cool, so uh, once you have a section masked out, You want to edge loop mask border, and that's going to turn that piece. Uh... Oh, hang on, one second. Yeah, so I think it gave us the, the edge there. Um, now you want to come in, and because it, it's kind of jaggedy, uh, you want to flatten that out and um, polish by teaching. We'll do that, so you see how it uh, gets rid of those jaggies. Uh, now, so now that you have, uh, with the edge uh, mask border, uh, actually, maybe didn't do it. Okay. Oh, man, why is it crap now? Do either of you guys use clay polish? feature much while doing a hard surface? I use it some, yeah, but when, I, when I'm roughing it with, a, with, a, uh, with H polish, I get it to a certain point that I use it, but I get, I'm a little bit careful with it. Like, I, I'm not, I feel I, like, I yeah, because I feel like I'm like stage stage overusing it. You know, like, because when you use clay polish feature, does it, that mask edge sometimes when you do it? It does mask edges. Okay. But I like that by so default, cool, Brian. Okay. There we go. All right. I guess I just wasn't grabbing it before. So um, the edge loop mouse border will give you a, a group between those sections. And if you come in and, and mask that out, it's going to give you the cut line. And we just want to make that a bit larger. So uh, we'll shrink the mask and sharpen it. come in here and just inflate that down a bit. Okay. 
And then it's, you, you used a, a, a bunch of methods to do hard surface too, right? Like panel loops and just and some of the more cr like cruder, just cutting panel lines and you just uh, used a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, the panel loops is another way to do it. I mean, there's like, there's a ton of way to do the stuff in ZBrush, so. Uh, another way uh, where I'll do uh, kind of m more minor cut lines is just using the damn standard yeah. Yeah. with an alpha. And that's and that does gets the job done. Even so that, yeah. like that was one of the main things that Dens showed me when he was breaking down that model. And it for me it was just like, are you allowed to do that? <laughs> like I, I didn't know because I always felt things had to be so precise with hard surface stuff. But it it kind of goes with what I was talking about, where it's like the clay tubes on the jaw, where it's just like what level is is needed. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's also when you're building a character, we have to evaluate those things too, because if something's you know, how close you're gonna get to it. Like, if it's just a cut line on like a thigh panel on a character, yeah. like you can get away with a lot. But if you're gonna be right up on something specific, then you gotta take more yeah. time to do it cleaner and more, and tighter. So, yeah. so you wanna make sure that you can't be sloppy in that case. Uh, so what I've done there is just, um, when I, once I had the cut line, is to shrink the mask and then polish that. And that's gonna give you like a, a little chamfer. And then you guys were talking about the clay polish before. Mm -hmm. Yep, I will just come in here and sharpen that up with the clay polish, and then that will give you kind of a nice, a nice panel line. Sexy. We're gonna have to call it here, unfortunately. Any last-minute questions or anything? Yeah. Do you Quite use the slice brush at all when doing that technique? Uh, myself, no, it's something I want to try out because I see people use it really successfully. You, does anybody uh, want to see a quick trick finish. since I just asked that question? You want to pull your model up real quick? Let me show a quick trick, quick trick. Pull that little piece you had. Pull that little oh, piece you had. okay, yep. Okay, now select the slice brush, the slice curve. So this is a, another way, like Denzel said, there's lots of ways, but this one's a popular Slice way. curve, pull? Slice curve, yep. slice curve. All right. Hold down your control shift, right? So you'll get a slice. So turn on the polygrouping so everyone can see. Turn on your polygroups. Oh, yep. Polyframe, okay. So obviously when you slice across, it creates an edge, and then you get a new polygroup. But if you now, instead of holding down control shift, do me really quick, control space bar instead. Okay. Control space bar, and turn on polygroup. Okay. What sorcery is this? Now let go. <laughs> let go. Make your brush size a little bit bigger so people can see what's going to happen. Okay. A little bit bigger. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now just slice across. All the way across. Oops. Just do a slice now across. That's so fine. So control okay. shift? Control shift and slice right across. <laughs> keep going, keep going, going. Now, <laughs> now let go. Let go. Let go. Is that tricky? Okay. Uh, go a little bit smaller. Your brush size is too big. Brush size is too big. Nice. Go a little smaller with the brush size. That's cool. Thanks, Paul. So it's going to create an edge loop based upon your draw size from the slice. Oh, wow. Okay. If the brush size is smaller than... Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So in essence, what he was doing, you could just do with the slice brush. Right. As long as, as, long as polygroups is on. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, sorry, B radius. Sorry, not B polygroup. B radius. Sorry, wrong B. <laughs> control space bar. Control space bar. Oh, you want, what do you yeah, mean? Control, control space, space bar. bar. Yep. Control space Control and space bar. Control and space bar. Oh, control. I'm going okay, up there. I can't show this. <laughs> this is not global. You run the show, dude. <laughs> Let me drive for a minute. I gotta show this now. Okay, so if you do this, okay, you can turn on B radius, okay, and then when you slice across, okay, <clears throat> ZBrush will use your brush size to create the slice thickness itself. So you can do, and obviously since it's a slice brush, you can cut it, you can curl it, so it's just really dense, so it's going to take a minute. All right, so when it's done, in a minute here, and now it's slicing it, because he's at 1.8 million right now, so it just takes a minute. Get uh, rich, dude. But you can do that as, on a low thing, so there you oh, go. Oh, that's cool. Dude, that's fucking dog life that's right there, dude. All right, I it's ruined that crazy. completely. Thank, thanks for making me look like a chump. <laughs> I ruined that completely. <laughs> I thanks, appreciate Paul. it. Yeah, yeah. Where, where were you at months ago? Yeah. Sorry. I'm an idiot. All right, we got to go, unfortunately, because we're, we're, uh, we're way behind time. So Thank you, guys. Software. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for having us.